Here we have the HP 24 DF series. Specifically, this one is the DF0214. Now, I'm getting a little sick and tired of buying HP computers and having nothing to bitch about. Almost. <laughs> Let's get some specs out of the way really quick. So this one comes with the Ryzen 3 3250U processor. It comes with eight gigabytes of RAM, which is in one slot. There is a second slot available, and you can upgrade to a total of 32 gigabytes of RAM. And it also has a 256 gigabyte NVMe solid state drive. It's the SN530 from Western Digital, which was a nice, good, reliable touch. And of course, that is upgradable as well if you ever wanted to crack the back of it open and pop a newer, bigger, faster one in. And then the cherry on top, is that it all comes with Vega 3 graphics. So basically you've just got this nice little AMD package and that all can be purchased for around the 600-ish dollar range depending on where you're buying it from. Now what I want to accomplish with this review today is not only if you should buy one yourself and if we recommend it and that typical jazz that we go through on this channel, but basically if this thing is good value or not in what is officially a very upward trending higher PC pricing market. So let's go ahead and move on to some of the, let, let's review the damn thing, shall we? It starts off with the LCD screen. Now, this is a 23.8 inch full high definition touch display. And all in, it does respond pretty well. It has very good colors. It has uh, very true whites, very deep blacks. It doesn't really ghost on the screen too bad. There is a little bit of jitter, and I don't know if you can actually see that on, on screen with this little geometric shape that I've got floating on by, but there is a little bit of latency and jitter in the display, uh, depending on like kind of what you're doing on it. But all in, we do think that it is a pretty good panel. We rated this thing at, I think, about a maximum of 260 nits, which is more than bright enough to where if you're like, working under overhead lights in an office or near a window, this kind of thing. And because it is a matte display, if you're near a window, you won't really have any trouble seeing what's on screen. And all in, it shouldn't be very fatiguing to the eyes. It should all be very pleasant and easy to look at for a long period of time. And that said, a lot of manufacturers are boasting about blue light blocking technology and all this other stuff. And HP doesn't make a mention of that on this particular model. But all in, we give this LCD an eight out of 10, which we think is a fairly respectable score. Obviously, it's not gonna be you know running in the same on the same racetrack as all of the 2K, 4K, 5K monitors, but for what it is and what you get, it's a, it's a nice panel. Moving on to the speakers. Very luckily, HP doesn't boast about having Dolby or Bose or Beats by Dre, any of that nonsense that doesn't really mean anything. Uh, and as a result, you're left with what is fairly decent speakers. We give them a six out of 10. You can definitely get like, they're they're like, they have like full range, but there's no character to it. They don't really distort at all. A little bit limited in, in the loads region, but as far as like highs and mids, that kind of thing, they produce pretty loud. So you could watch like a movie, listen to a podcast, this kind of thing. And I think all in all have a fairly good audio experience with it. But if you're going to be doing any kind of audio file or audio editing activity, which we will get into a little bit later, uh, then you're definitely going to want a set of headphones to plug into the back of it. Now around this point in the video, if we were reviewing a laptop, we would be talking about the keyboard and the trackpad. But obviously as an all-in-one, this doesn't have a built-in keyboard and trackpad. Instead, Hewlett Packard very delightfully gives you a wireless keyboard and mouse uh, with this machine. So uh, here is what that mouse looks like, by the way, and I'll get some B-roll stuff of that later on. But uh, nevertheless, a lot of manufacturers like Dell and Lenovo are still shipping with uh, USB mice, and we were very pleasantly surprised that Hewlett Packard decided to give you a wireless mouse. They're a very standard, cheap wireless keyboard and mouse. They will be more than usable for most people typing. And of course it is full size, so if you're an accountant, you do have that little numpad on the right side if you need it. But that's it because they're not built in. We are not, we're just gonna go ahead and bypass it and not give these a rating at all. Next up, my favorite part, is the IO on this particular machine. And they, they kind of, ah, I kind of skimped a little bit on the IO. Uh, on the back. And they're only on the back. There is nothing on the sides. There is nothing on the bottom. There is nothing on the top, which will be bothersome and or troublesome to some people that want to have easy, accessible I.O. And so far as we can tell, there's no like adapter or anything else that you can connect to the machine. You will have to buy yourself a little freestanding hub to connect to the back of it. But anyway, on the back, you get a TRRRS jack to have headphones, microphones, all that stuff built right in. You get a gigabit ethernet port. You have an HDMI slot. 
port, not a slot. <laughs> two USB super speeds and two USB regulars. There is no USB-C to hear of or speak of. So that means that you get you have four USB ports. And then of course, where you plug it in because it doesn't run on solar energy. We were a little dis we're going to give the IO a 5 out of 10 on this because for an all-in-one we start to expect things like USB-C, maybe more USB ports in general, something to just kind of give it a little bit of that oomph. 5 out of 10, by all accounts, is an average score. This has average I.O., so thus it gets a 5 out of 10. We think that we are being more than fair with that assessment on that. Now let's talk about features for this HP computer. Features, you know, it's actually surprisingly pretty decent, and the features are sort of what's going to sort of build up its, its uh, value and, and whether or not we recommend it here. It does come with a webcam at the top, and that does, you know, plunges down and recesses into the frame, which we always, we always love that feature. A lot of people come into our shop with like a little sticky note over the webcams, and we kind of think that looks stupid, um, although we get it. And, uh, but, but if you want to dance naked in front of your monitor, you'll have no problem doing that. You just pop it right down, no big deal. Dual microphone array, has the webcam and everything built in. Here's what that webcam footage looks like now. This is the quality that you can expect from the HP 24DS webcam. As you can see, it's, it's probably, it'll be good for like office and productivity stuff. And then as far as some other features to touch upon, it comes with Wi-Fi AC. It has Bluetooth 4.0. Again, it has a touchscreen. It has a Windows Hello compatible camera, if I can get this puppy up, uh, which we really, you know, that was kind of a pleasant surprise having a Windows Hello compatible camera. Typically computers in like the 800 and range and below don't come with those, but this one does. And we thought that was pretty nice. Another notable thing you'll find funny is that on the side of the computer where the DVD slot normally would go, HP decided to just put an empty like DVD drive like plastic cover on it. And interestingly enough, if you break open the computer and get to the motherboard, you will see that it does have a slot for a DVD drive, but they just decided not to put one in here. Uh, let's see some other features of this thing. We also have Intel RST, which is becoming kind of a very popular thing for a lot of Hewlett Packard computers. Uh, we're not a huge fan of Intel RST. Well, we have our reasons why. We'll maybe release another video about that sometime soon, but nevertheless, uh, it has Intel RST, so it's nice and quick and peppy and all that stuff, which does lead me into the next point, which is our new kind of like power slash usability slash value category. But that said, as far as the features are concerned, this does get a 7 out of 10. It's definitely above average, and we would probably have rated it a little bit higher were it not for the $600-ish price tag. The problem that we have with the price tag on this thing is it is kind of becoming the norm, obviously, with inflation and supply chain issues, that these kinds of computers are going to be a little bit more expensive. So I think that we're, you know, we need to kind of adjust our benchmark as far as where these kinds of things sit. But nevertheless, there are, of course, computers that have a lot more features and stuff going on. So, you know, it's a, it's a decently equipped computer with some fun little nice surprises and tweaks. So, all in, again, we think that it's a pretty fair rating. Now, as far as usability and power is concerned, let's go ahead and jump over the benchmark here. 8% gaming, desktop is 59%, gunboat, kind of cool, and then a workstation 7%, on user benchmark. Now, what does all that translate to? Um, this computer is really going to be for like maybe like a nonprofit, a small business, maybe like a checkout station in a little store, something sitting on an office desk, this kind of thing. It is very, very fine for productivity. Uh, that said, we don't like, you know, it's not going to be for like gamers or audio editors or video editors even. You could definitely knock out some like 1080p video editing, uh, maybe even like some kind of light audio editing, some s small podcasting, this kind of thing. Our problem with it though is that because it doesn't have USB-C, you're going to be limited by tra data transfer rates. Because you also don't have USB-C, you're going to be limited with like audio switches and this kind of thing. A 24-inch screen is a lot of real estate to, to do editing on, like timelines and this kind of thing. But with those, paired with those, that 8 gigs of RAM, the Ryzen 3 processor, the Vega 3 graphics, it just doesn't have a whole lot of horsepower. So really, this is just kind of a pro productivity computer, which is fine. That You know, the world needs those things. But does it need those things for 600-ish plus dollars? We feel like you could probably find something a little bit cheaper that kind of does the same thing all in. 
See, one of the other issues with this computer is that the, the RAM in it, it comes with eight gigabytes of RAM, and again, it is ex expandable, but the thing is, is that the graphics card is stealing, I think, something like two gigs right off the bat. So, I mean, you're, you're just sort of left with something that isn't, like, grossly powerful. It just, it, 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 I think it'd be good for, like, an accountant, for example, like, if it's just sitting on a desk, it's got, you got the numpad on the keyboard, you can knock out some data entry with this kind of thing, and again, the big enough screen to kind of see the the register and TurboTax and all this stuff, uh, you know, and it's enough power to drive things like PowerPoints, Excel spreadsheets, Outlook, tons of Chrome, Firefox, Firefox tabs, this kind of thing. Um, but again, it's just not a, it's not, it's just not a, a, a workstation beast by any means. All in that leaves this computer with a rating of about six and a half out of 10. And we think that that's a pretty astute value for this machine. Our problem in general with Hewlett Packard is, of course, their ethics and a few other things. They're basically, as a company as a whole, they tend to cut a lot of corners. They're, they're not ethical by any stretch of now. You can watch our hating on HP videos. And, you know, this machine uses kind of cheap materials and plastics and stuff like that, which I don't think for an all in one is that big of a deal. Again, it's just something that kind of sits on a desk. It doesn't really do a whole lot. And I don't really know if this, by the way, if this helps at all. It's, it does, you know, it, it moves pretty flexibly like it, it gives you some good some good angle I know you can't really probably see the side of it too well but it does tilt back and forth it doesn't move up and down and uh, it's just got this little sort of four foot four feet stand here so yeah I don't know uh, we don't really like Hewlett Packard's but we have been reviewing a few of their computers lately and I wouldn't say that we've been impressed but we just don't hate them and you know it's it's a good machine all in all I mean maybe a, a, a little bit overpriced but it's a good computer and by all accounts it will probably be reliable and just do its thing. I mean, most computers these days tend to be reliable, but then of course, if something does go wrong with it, you just have to contend with HP's customer service. That said, that is our very transparent, unbiased review of the HP DF series, 24 DF series. Good computer, maybe a skosh overpriced, but in a market where you can't really find much anything else, it may be all you can get. Anyway, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, reach out to us in the comment section. Uh, if you decide that you want to buy one yourself, please use our affiliate link in the comments. We'd be very, very grateful. It helps us a lot. Anyway, yeah, we will be back with another video really soon.